Good morning YouTube, Mark here. I'm standing in smoke, you know what that means, I'm smoking today. Today it, it was kind of hard. Uh, I wanted to record this, but I got a daughter that's laid up on the uh, sofa on, in the living room. And I didn't want to do all the recording and stuff in the house, you know, of what I was prepping and all that. So I'm basically just going to tell you what I've done and uh, you have to take my word for it. Uh, today I'm smoking a beef brisket, and this isn't a small little beef brisket. This thing is huge. Um, most briskets I've seen are usually around 14 pounds. This one was 18 and a half pounds. It's taking up literally three quarters of my grill. I've got like that much room for my fire before it's actually under my meat. My prepping, of course, you know, you go through and you cut off a lot of the. Uh, the uh, harder fat areas and, and just to kind of trim things up a little bit. I, I did have to cut quite a bit off so it's probably actually down close to uh, 17 pounds but uh, it's still a good size brisket. I injected it with a just a can of beef broth that I bought at the store just to add some extra moisture to it, uh, keep it from drying out. Add a little more beef flavor to the meat and then I put on a very simple rub I kind of wanted to go with more of a Texas style rub which means basically just salt and pepper but I wanted a little more flavoring than that so I went with a simple Montreal seasoning I think uh, made by McCormick I like it on my steaks I like it on uh, pot roast and stuff like that so we'll see what it's like on a brisket from there, got my grill going, and uh, I'm maintaining a temperature around 250. Um, I want the higher temperature because if you remember from my previous videos, uh, you get different flavorings from wood at different temperatures. So for the uh, pork roast, you know, the, and uh, you know, the pork shoulder, the, the ribs, I keep it low. I keep it at about 225, somewhere in there. This, I want more of a peppery taste from the wood, so I'm keeping it at about 250. Um, it is a cold day today. It, uh, when I got out here, it was only like 42 degrees, so I'm having a little problem keeping my temperature where I want it. A little bit of breeze blows in and uh, it cools it off real quick. Um, I'm also using just Kingsford charcoal. I'm not used to it. I just typically use a lump, hardwood lump charcoal. So yeah, it's uh, a little bit different for me. Um, I'm hoping I like it because when I when I bought it, I didn't realize I bought the uh, the match light stuff. So when it first started, it had a uh, kind of like a uh, well, chemical lighter smell. So I'm hoping that didn't get too much into the meat. And then uh, I got a, uh, a water bath in here. Uh, that's why it seems like there's a lot more smoke. It's Most of it is steam just from that water bath because that water in there is boiling. So even though it seems like I've got a lot of smoke coming out of here, truthfully I don't. A lot of it is just plain steam that's escaping. And because it's cold out here, you see a lot more of it. Oh, so that's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to keep it in the smoke for about four hours. I do not have a temperature probe in the meat. I'm only going to cook it to where I think it looks pleasing on the outside. You know, that nice dark mahogany color. That's all I'm doing in the smoker. Once I've reached that doneness of color that I want, I'm going to wrap it in foil, I'm going to stick it in the oven in the kitchen, and I'm going to finish it off in there. That's where I'll stick the probe in and maintain it, get the temperature up to around 290 or 195 to 200 degrees, somewhere in there. Um, from there, I'll pull it out, it'll rest for a little while before I slice into it and eat it. So it's going to be a fun day today, just sitting here maintaining the grill temperatures, maybe catch a little football today, and uh, yeah, it should be good. You know, it's been a while since I started the grill, and thankfully that uh, chemical smell that I was telling you about has dissipated off, and now I'm just really smelling the, uh, the smoking wood in there. 
Same system I always use. I use that uh, cast iron skillet. I loaded it up with hickory chips and I threw a little bit of cherry in there because uh, that will kind of help the uh, smoke ring appearance on the meat. You know, a lot of people put an emphasis on that smoke ring. And you know what? It is so easy to fake a smoke ring that I can't really use it as a criteria for how a smoked product is going to be. I've had smoke rings that look fantastic, but for some reason the smoked flavor just isn't there. So don't put too much emphasis on a smoke ring. Um, it looks nice, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's no criteria in how well it's going to taste. Well, it's been about uh, two hours or so since I started this. I see my temperature has been dropping steadily over the last uh, 15 minutes or so. Um, instead of being up around 250, I'm down to 240. So I think I'm going to pop it open, uh, put in some more charcoal, and just check on the, uh, on the goings on. I was hoping I wouldn't have to ever open it up. I was hoping that the charcoal that I put in there was going to last the full four hours, but I kind of figured it wouldn't as well. So I'm just going to pop it open and see what's going on. Uh, if you notice, I'm not seeing as much smoke here. It's because the temperature is warming up. So yeah, you're not really seeing a whole lot of the steam and stuff coming out either. So, all right, let's pop the lid and see what we got going on. Let's see. Yeah, put the coals back together again. Meat's looking all right. Not quite as dark as I want to get it yet, so I'm going to, of course, leave it in there for a bit longer. Got plenty of water in my water pan down there. So yeah, I think just uh, adding some more charcoal. Gotta be careful and do this kind of quick because like I said I have that match light stuff. And this stuff will flame up in no time. Yeah, back there it goes. Put my hand back in here. Shut the lid. I'm not going to reopen my dampeners because that uh, match light stuff did flame up right away and I want to smother that out. I don't want it to keep flaming up. <clears throat> so I'm going to leave my dampeners alone. It'll just return to its uh, setting where it was before. So, Alright, hopefully that will last at least another hour and a half or so. Hopefully. Alright, time to get back to well, doing absolutely nothing. Ha <laughs> You know, a lot of people ask me why I sit out here with my grill and just maintain the temperature and stuff, and I don't really do a whole lot. Well, to me, it's alone time. Uh, if I go in the house, I got the kids asking for stuff and, and wife telling me to do this and that and the other thing. And if I'm sitting out here, that means I'm not doing chores in the house. Sounds good to me. Oh, by the way, when I uh, threw that extra charcoal on, again, I got that lighter smell fluid now in the air. So 
I'm hoping that doesn't transfer onto the meat. Because if it does, I'll write Kingsford a letter and say you guys suck. But if the meat tastes fine, then I won't write the letter. And then Kingsford's okay. I've still been having problems though maintaining a, a consistent temperature. It just varies, you know, it's up five degrees, down 10 degrees, up another five degrees, up three degrees. It's just all over the place. It's just unbelievable. I thought this stuff was supposed to be uh, easy to maintain, maintain a temperature, but it's just all over. Uh, I think I'm going to sit here and get caught up on my YouTube. Well, the channels I watch catch up on those, not what I'm doing here. I wish there were times where I could, you know, turn on a propane tank and, and set a temperature and have it maintained while I'm sleeping at night. But, uh, you know, I just don't have that capability right now. I am looking at building something, and when I find the right parts and pieces, uh, I will. But uh, right now, I don't. Uh, I'm thinking of something propane powered. Uh, possibly built inside an old like a refrigerator or something it's got to be stainless steel it can't be anything plastic but I want something insulated as well so we'll see if I come up with anything oh yeah okay still got some good uh, wood chips going there I think I'll have enough for the rest of the cook I got about an hour to go Lots of moisture, as you can tell. That's a good thing. It's still very wet all over. Color is looking great. I'm very happy with the way it's uh, looking and turning out. Uh, probably leave it on for another hour or so. Um, just to uh, you know, get a little more smoky flavor to it. And then I'll take it inside, I'll wrap it up in foil, stick a probe in it, and then just stick it in the oven and cook it till it's done. All right, so it's been about four hours. I think the meat is about where I want it. It looks wonderful. So I'm gonna take it inside and get it wrapped up and put in the oven. Silicone. <laughs> Doesn't that look beautiful? Let's go inside. All right, let's get this thing wrapped up. Put it there. Take my little mitts off. Seventy-five degrees. I'm going to put this in that oven and finish it off in there. Open the door. I am going to leave the baking pan underneath, just so I don't accidentally, just so I don't accidentally rip the foil. So in case it, you know, would rip and drip all over the place, I don't want it flaming up. So pans in there just to make sure that the juices don't uh, leak all over my oven. Okay? Almost forgot to put my probe in. Gotta know my temperature now. Pick this part up. 
on it. Now this is just a uh, this is just a transmitter. Uh, it's a wireless system, so I don't have to sit here and keep looking at the uh, the temperature. I can carry the uh, receiver with me and just pull it out of my pocket, or if I just sitting at the couch, just you know set it on the end table or something, and I can keep my eye on my temperature. Okay, so this is the little receiver. I've got it set for 195 degrees. Now this is the first time I've actually seen what the temperature of the meat is. And it's already at 145 from that four hour smoke. So I'm just gonna finish it in the oven. Uh, I'm not too worried anymore about you know having it dry out or anything because when it's all sealed up like that, all that moisture from the fat that's left over on the meat will keep it nice and moist. I'm not worried about that at all. So all I gotta do now is just wait for the timer to go off and then it's dinner time. Okay, it's been about, gosh, probably close to three hours, I think, since I pulled the brisket off the grill and put it in the oven. My timer just went off saying that it is up to temp. Okay, now I'm actually not gonna take it out of the oven. I'm actually gonna leave it in there until I'm ready to use it. So uh, yeah, probably maybe another two hours of just sitting in the warm oven with no additional heat. I, I literally turned the oven off, but it's going to stay in the hot box and uh, just mellow out in there for a while. Ooh. Juices are everywhere. pretty good if you ask me. All right first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the point which is this end from the flat which is this end. All right take a look at the bottom side here. There is some here that I'm going to cut off. My puppy loves me. Gray, get your treat. There you go. Good girl. Okay. Now the grain of the meat is running this direction. So I'm going to cut this. Uh, let's see, how do I want to do it? I think I'll just cut it in half here. Typically you see a lot of guys on the uh, point and they just basically chunk it up. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in quarters. Really, really tender. <laughs> mm. If only they had taste of vision in YouTube. Yeah, here. You want a bite? Here, take a bite. Again, nice smoke ring. That's no sign of good smoke flavor, but this one does have very good smoke flavor. Mmm. Okay, as you know, or if you don't know, the uh, brisket, you know, it needs to be, you know, you can hold it upside down and outside without falling apart, but yet 
it should pull apart very easily and this definitely doesn't okay so uh yeah the brisket turned out great uh, i'm very pleased with it uh, for being such a simple uh, recipe that i used uh, and something i just kind of pulled out of my ass it turned out really well um, the beef injection definitely added a lot of uh, additional beef flavor to the meat um, i think i could have gone a little bit heavier on the uh on the seasoning that I put on there, that uh, um, McCormick uh, Montreal seasoning I put on there. The smoke. Remember when I was, uh, when I told you when I first started and when I added some more, I could smell the, the lighter fluid in that match slate? I can actually taste it in here. So yeah, I'm not very happy with that. You know, having such an expensive cut of meat uh, and then uh, kind of having a, a lighter fluid smoky flavor to it yeah don't get me wrong it still tastes great uh, we're definitely gonna eat it we're not gonna throw it away uh, that's you know except for some fatty pieces you know the rest is all ours <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna just sit here and start slicing and dicing and uh, um, make some sandwiches and stuff for work I actually have to go to work at midnight tonight so I got my lunch. This is Mark saying thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the road after I'm done eating. <laughs>